The Sandy 60 project has been so much fun to be involved in. I'm extremely proud to be part of a team who has put so much energy and enthusiasm into this vehicle. I remember saying, let's celebrate it. But like a dream, we've brought this 35 year old vehicle back to life. We've been loving your feedback on the build, but in order to tell you the whole story, we need to go right back to Kalgoorlie, where it all started. As you know, we found this old bus in Cal with its bonnet up and instantly fell in love with it. The first thing we did was take it to on-track fabrication to see what we had for the pull apart. Remember, it's a 35 year old 60 series cruiser and we had no idea of its history. We found some really bad swamp water under the vinyl floor and some seriously bad rust. But for a 60 series, it actually was in fairly good shape. Luke and the boys got stuck right into the rust repair and almost in an old school style, fixed it right for the long term. What an amazing sight to see where sheet metal was crafted into creating panels to repair what the rust had destroyed. Then it was off to Jaden and his team at Distorted Paint and Restoration. These guys were itching to get a hold of this project and took what was going to be a closed door respray into something that they could be proud of. The work they did really made me smile as you can see this old 60 series coming to life in front of us. Now that 79 series bonnet, how good does it look? When Luke and Jaden told me of their idea of creating this bonnet, I was just so excited. Bringing a little bit more modern styling into this build was the original idea and I reckon this would be trick. This was a huge job where Distorted basically cut the 60 and 79 bonnets and stitched the two together. The new lines brought that look from the 79 which I really love but also helped in cooling the 6.2 Chev. The complete outer edges are from the 60 series bonnet but the internals and the outside skin are from a 79. The Sandy 60 had a brief pit stop at ARB Wangara for suspension and a roof rack system before heading back to Kalgoorlie to Goldfields Off-Road. Ben is a very detailed guy who loves a challenge and couldn't wait to get stuck into the drivetrain and electrical system. In order to ensure that there was not going to be any dramas on this first trip across Australia, we wanted to look over everything. Well, the minute Ben started pulling things apart, it became evident that the 60 series would need more and more repairs. With this build, we were always going to be installing ARB air lockers, so it would make sense to replace bearings, seals, etc., which are all readily available from Terrain Tamer in kits for all these older vehicles. Other parts from these guys included all the gear sets, braking components, the clutch, and the ABM hubs. But Ben being a perfectionist, he just couldn't help himself and he decided to get stuck into the engine as well. While all this was going on, the gearbox was sent through to Mark's four-wheel drive for a complete overhaul. Jeff is an absolute legend in this field and has specified the gears to match 34s and the 6.2 Chev conversion. This will give us a better top end gear in high range and also adds 41% reduction gears for low range. This will be perfect in places like the high country. We then picked it back up from Cal and towed it all the way back to ARB Wangara for a huge working bee. A team of eight guys worked on getting as much gear fitted to the Sandy 60 both inside and out. It's amazing how this old vehicle has brought people together and added smiles to their faces along the way. Installation of a select set of accessories has brought this vehicle to life. How good is it that these accessories are still available from ARB for old classics like this to help people with these projects? The custom built edition of the rear bar by OTF, designed to integrate the original bar look with ARB styling, has made a huge improvement in the functionality and the touring look of the Sandy 60. The 3XM rear pop out windows have everyone's tick of approval. The interior was another huge effort, but it also displayed to me again how many great quality products are available for these old vehicles. Carpet, door trims, seat belts, these awesome aftermarket seats, the beautifully styled consoles, sound deadening, plus with the help of a motor trimmer, anything is possible. The consoles were created by the Department of the Interior with a mix of old school features and new look style and are still available today. The guys from Stratos told me that they had exactly the right seats for the Sandy 60, including engineered bases. And with the help of Luke from OTF, the seating in this vehicle was brought into today's world. In the back we have a set of outback drawers with the ARB Zero fridge freezer and it really suits the sandy top look. This fridge can be monitored either through Lynx or through your smartphone. The electrical in this vehicle is next level with all the Red Arc gear. We have upgraded the dash by adding bits that have provided extra functionality but still display the old school charm. I think the Alpine Halo 9 is a perfect fit and has so many features. For comms, we're running dual GME aerials up front. One of these is a UHF to talk to the crew, and the other is cellular, boosted, to help people communicate on their phones. The addition of Lynx provides all of the controls of heaps of switches and gauges in a small smartphone-looking device which is mounted replacing the old ashtray. 
Well, we don't need that anymore. Now that 79 series steering wheel, which was reupholstered by Tyson at Pro Stitch, I reckon just looks apart. Not too modern, so it fits with the dash, but it also holds a better feel. We've added a couple of tech rust proofing system, which should stop the future rust problems. For all you people keen on LED lighting, driving at night will be illuminated by Intensity V2s up front, Bushranger light bar up on top, plus we have these cool looking Nava LED replacement headlights. A few people have asked me why I've gone for lithium in the back. I now always use Century batteries up front in the engine bay, but in the back for running all the gear, I wouldn't use anything else but lithium batteries from Revolution Batteries Australia. Whilst 100 amps of lithium weighs in at 11.5 kilos, to achieve the same usable amps in AGM batteries, it would weigh in around about 72 kilos. Now why have I gone for the Red Arc Battery Manager 30? Mainly for the three power inputs. I can recharge this setup whilst I'm driving via the alternator, through solar whilst stationary outside, and while it's parked up in a factory somewhere, it means I can plug it into the mains. Now the way that Ben has wired all this up, he's made use of a Red Arc 1206 DC to DC unit which charges the front batteries from the rear setup. So whilst the Sandy 60 is parked up between trips, the 1206 provides up to six amps of power from the charging rear setup to those front batteries. What are we gonna do for fuel? We've extended the fuel capacity by adding this long range 70 liter auxiliary tank, which is slung underneath next to the transfer case. We also have two jerry cans, that's 40 liters of fuel on the OTF rear bar. Everybody knows one of the quickest ways of dressing up a vehicle is to add a good set of wheels and tyres. I've always said I wanted to make this different, so the perfect set of wheels has to be these 17 inch ROH Vapors and 34 inch BFG KM3s for traction. I just absolutely love this combination. Now the suspension, well what can I say, this was an area of discussion and procrastination. Sean and I had so many phone calls about this one, but the final decision of going with the combination of Old Man Emu suspension and Airbag Man airbags was a great one, which will easily adapt to the various loads through the controls in Lynx. With any build there's always some of those last minute additions. Sean had the guys from Sonic Signs jump onto it getting everything sorted from those beautiful decals from our designs. And to emphasise the bonnet pop, we just couldn't resist but to add this graphic. I love it, what do you think? One of the last additions to the Sandy 60 was this beautiful Manta exhaust. Manta provided us their custom guy, Andy, who has 35 years of experience. He's handcrafted this stainless system, which goes two inches into three inches. He's painted it black with a heatproof paint for ease of maintenance. And at the back, it carries a four inch stainless tip. Due to the engine conversion, Andy had a heap of fun trying to run it around the transfer case, keeping it nice and high and using all the original mounts. Now this trip across Australia, you might ask? Now obviously with the current circumstances, we've had to defer the trip. We deferred the trip quite some time ago. And unfortunately, we don't have a date at this time. But rest assured, we'll keep everyone informed as things change. But we would also like to let you know that if you'd like to see further updates of the build and behind the scene footage, give us a follow as we'll be releasing more content and some of those extras being added. Ben, who has been doing all the wiring, has suggested a few extra goodies for the Sandy 60 with cruise control and keyless entry. For further updates while you're waiting for this trip across Australia to begin, follow us on Off-Road Images Builds and Off-Road Images and we'll keep you all posted with all the latest stuff with the Sandy 60.